What is up YouTube, Jamie the Kid 0 here coming at you guys with a brand new deck profile. So today we're going to be talking about a deck that I wanted to bring to you guys oh, about half a year ago now, but I never really got around to perfecting the concept and I was on one of my many Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube hiatuses, um, and that was Dream Mirror. Um, this is going to be the first deck of my Chaos Week uh, with the new Chaos support in Toon Chaos. Um, I'm going to be bringing you a whole bunch of deck features uh, with the new support, um, but this was the first thing that I wanted to actually bring you guys because I've had the whole core sitting in one of my binders for ages, um, and it's not the easiest deck to perfect. It's definitely not something that's all that strong uh, in a Hulk of Fibrax format, but as soon as the power curve and the starting boards fall down, this is definitely something you could have some fun with at your local scene. Um, so we're going to dig right into it, and I'm going to kind of explain what the cards do and how the deck works as we go through it. So if you're new here, you can still kind of get an idea for the deck. So we're going to open up with the monster sequence, and every monster in here has a light version and a dark version. So the three first monsters we're going to go through are Icolos, the Dream Mirror Sprite. Um, so Icolos is, uh, this is the only Dream Mirror that we're playing a three of in the deck, um, and Icolos, uh, in her light version, uh, is if she's special summoned to the board by the effect of a Dream Mirror. Uh, now all of the Dream Mirrors can tag themselves out if they have uh, a different mirror on the field which we'll get to uh, for their dark or light counterpart um if she's special summoned by the dream mirror effect uh, by the effect of a dream mirror monster you can add a dream mirror card from your deck to your hand so it's your primary stratos and that comes in handy because of some of the timings with say some uh, cards like the fusion spell which we'll get to in a little bit um then most importantly during the main or battle phase if dream mirror of terror is in the field spell zone either field spell zone, uh, you can tribute this card as a quick effect to special summon uh, Icolos the Dream Mirror Mara, which is her dark counterpart. Um, so what you'll be doing is you'll be triggering this effect, tributing it off to special summon the dark counterpart, and the dark counterpart can very similarly special summon the light counterpart, all happening from the deck. Um, so to go with the three Icolos the Dream Mirror Sprite, we are playing three copies of Icolos the Dream Mirror Mara. Now, the Mara's cool as well, because Mara has very, very similar effect. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster, you can special summon one Dream Mirror monster from your hand. Now, this is a deck that doesn't feature a huge amount of board acceleration, so that ability to special summon from your hand as Mara is essential. Mara can trigger the Light Mara if you special summon it from your hand, or can trigger a lot of the other Dream Mirror cards in the deck uh, that all require themselves to be special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster. Normally, you're relying on that tag out of the Light turning into the Dark and vice versa, but Mara Mara does circumvent that. So Sprite and Mara, I think, are some of the most important cards in the deck. And that's why we run them as the three ofs. If I can pick them up without, like, throwing them everywhere. I have to reach around a big tripod. It's more difficult than you guys think. Um, so continuing through, we then play two of the Light Phantasos, the Dream Mirror Friend, and two of Phantasos, the Dream Mirror Foe. Um, so Phantasos is a card that goes from two to three more often than I know how to count in this deck. Um... Because honestly, I, I'm super bipolar on how I feel about the effect. Phantasos, the Dream Mirror Foe, the Dark variant, has an effect that if it's special summoned, um, it can attack directly this turn. And there are cards that can buff that, and it can do quite a considerable amount of damage. Um, however, I, I really don't think that effect is very good. Um, and it's honestly the reason why I, I almost want to just remove the card entirely if there was any better support whatsoever. Um, Phantasos, the Dream Mirror Friend, however, is really, really good because if it's special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror Monster, it can target a level 8 or lower Dream Mirror Monster in the graveyard, uh, of course, except itself, and special summon it in defense position, and it doesn't negate their effects. So, on a fundamental level, this becomes a really free accelerator because if the light mirror is on the field, you can tribute this off for the light version. The light version immediately reses the dark version and you have two level fours on the field to do with whatever the, whatever you want with them. Um, it can also get pretty interesting. Like if you've discarded um, Sprite, for example, to search using um, the Chaos Space spell, um, if this is in the graveyard, you're going to like normal this, tribute it, special the light, special this back, get a search, then you can potentially switch the mirrors, tribute this off, get the dark, and you can get some real acceleration going so i think that the dream mirror friend is fantastic the foe not so much but it's kind of essential to get you into the friend but you can definitely get away with running three of each of those i just can't find the room in the list then the only odd ratio i am playing is i'm playing one copy of morpheus the dream mirror white knight make your simp jokes now uh, and two copies of morpheus the dream mirror black knight now morpheus the white knight um his effect isn't very good um if we special summon by the effect of a Dream Mirror Monster, you can activate this effect, and this card cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects this turn. It's got a 2-8 booty. 
it's all right. It's mainly going to be used as a level eight to go together with your dark creator uh, to make some rank eight XYZs or link up into bigger things. Um, in the form of Morpheus, however, sorry, in the form of the Dark Knight or Black Knight, however, uh, Morpheus can trigger, trigger itself to tribute out to special summon this guy. And if he's special summoned by the effect of a dream mirror monster, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Um, so that's where the Black Knight comes into play. Um, it's a really good response card because you're able to special summon it, of course, in your opponent's turn because these are all quick effects to tag out. Um, so that's where it comes into its own. Um, you can also recur this Morpheus with the effects of things like the Dark Creator or the Friend. So I feel like only one of these is required because every time you want to get into this, you're going to specifically set up a, Morph uh, a White Knight Morpheus instead. Um, and that's all the Dream Mirror Monsters we play in the main board. Uh, we are also playing a few uh, Chaos cards, and this is really subject to change. This is a brew that I'm currently testing on Edo Pro. Um, so I'm testing one copy of Chaos Valkyria. Um, Chaos Valkyria has been an interesting card that I wanted to trial out, because it's been good for extension and allowing me to get into some of the more powerful Link 2s that the deck can take advantage of. Um, I'm not sure entirely how she feels. She's also really good to banish using some of the bigger boss monsters and then cycle her back into the deck using Chaos Space. So it's a card that's really good in theory. In execution, uh, there's probably still a little bit to be wanted from her. Uh, we then play two copies of Chaos Daedalus. Chaos Daedalus is broken in this deck, and this is one of the best decks for it. Um, you have to special summon it, of course, by banishing a light and dark monster from your graveyard. And while this card, while a field spell is face up on the field, your opponent can't target light or dark monsters you control with card effects, which is really, really cool. So, of course, it includes itself some of your other boss monsters that you can set up from the extra deck as well. Um, so there's that really good bit of prevention. Um, then also, you can target cards on the field up to the number of face up field spells on the field and banish them. So you're very often going to have two field spells up because this deck plays a trap that's similar to set rotation and it gives your opponent one of your mirrors, um, as well as giving new one so it's really really cool for that you're often going to get two banishes off of this so it works kind of like levianir um, but it banishes and it protects so it's infinitely better in that regard um, and then finally we do also play two copies of the chaos creator this card is absolutely bananas um, and it's kind of in this deck to substitute the fact that normally you'd have to play pot of avarice to cycle cards back into the deck but because of the amount you banish with these boss monsters and also with your um with your a uh, fusion spell that can banish from the graveyard, similar to kind of a miracle fusion type thing. Um, I think that this is is absolutely fine to cycle cards back into the deck and then res certain cards that you need, i.e. Morpheus, things like that. For the spell lineup, even though Toon Chaos is st is out, I'm still substituting my pots of extravagance for the moment. Um, so again, if we uh, if I if I get into the editing and use a bit of movie magic, these will all be pot of extravagances. Um, I felt that the extra deck in this deck isn't too important and it massively needs some assistance with uh, with support on card advantage. Um, so I think Pot of Extravagance is an absolute must in this. You can probably get away with something else to draw cards, but um, if it exists, I'm not seeing it. So Extravagance is still very, very important for the deck. It doesn't have any other draw effects other than through Chaos Space, so it's really not going to impact your systems at all. It's just going to draw you two free cards, and you should realistically be able to dodge your Oneros, at least on the first attempt. Uh, Oneros being the boss monster, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, I am then playing three copies of Chaos Space. Um, Chaos Space is really kind of cool. Um, you can discard, of course, all of your Dream Mirror counterparts from your hand, getting them into the grave to set them up for resing with uh, friend or banishing and then resing with creator so you can get a bit interesting in how you're going to play that out um, it's a little awkward because I just said about the deck needing card advantage and then this does require a discard which can be kind of awkward so it's really dependent on your hand um, it might be a card that you could honestly afford to cut maybe down to two or cut entirely just in favor of say playing the boss monsters when you draw them but uh, this being newly out and me wanting to get to those boss, boss monsters pretty quickly because they give you really good advantage um, I, I, I'm, I'm playing the three of I want to accelerate to them I love chaos creator and what it brings to the game so Absolutely playing three chaos space for the moment. Then for the actual Dream Mirror spells, we'll start off with two copies of the Archetypes Fusion spell. So Dream Mirror of Chaos, Fusion summons one Dream Mirror Fusion monster from your extra deck. There is only one, which is this guy, Oneros, the Dream Mirror Earl King. Uh, we'll get to him in a little bit, but if you want a kind of sneak peek of his text, you can have a read there. Um, so you can use either monsters. You can normally, when you activate this with no field spell out, you can fusion summon using monsters you control on your field. 
So if a Dream Mirror of Joy, the light field spell, is on the field, you can actually use Dream Mirror monsters in your hand, or if a Dream Mirror of Terror is on the field, you can use monsters from your graveyard. And that's the more advantageous effect that we normally try to target. It's also how you get beyond uh, two banished cards when you're going to be making your dark, uh, Chaos Creator plays. Um, and that's how you're going to set that up. So you do kind of want to rush towards Dream Mirror of Chaos in this deck. It's why we play things like Verte Anaconda, to give us our best chance of using Dream Mirror of Chaos and then get Getting uh, our Chaos Creator onto the field later on. Um, so two, two Dream Mirror of Chaos. Oh, and another interesting part about this is because it's a uh, because it is a quick effect. Um, you do a lot of searching in your end phase because of the way that the Dream Mirror field spells cycle through, and then you can cycle through the monsters, which we'll get to in a little bit. It's a little bit. Uh, technical. Um, because you add this in the end phase, you can then immediately use it uh, and make that fusion summon within your turn. Then for the other support, we play three copies of Dream Mirror Phantasms. Dream Mirror Phantasms is kind of like a really broken tanky for the deck. Um, so when this card is activated, you can add a Dream Mirror monster from your deck to your hand. And then if a Dream Mirror mon if a Dream Mirror of Joy is in a field zone, all monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense. And if a Dream Mirror of Terror is in a field spell zone, your uh, all monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense. And if both of the mirrors are out both of those effects are in play so it can really be a buff of a thousand for everything on the board which is really really cool um and it's a search card so we're of course going to play three of that um then we get into the actual field spells that i've been alluding to the entire deck and i probably should have done these before even getting into the monster lineup so we play three copies of dream mirror of joy and then three copies of dream mirror of terror um and the effects of these are kind of inconsequential, uh, but they do end up coming up more often than you'll think. Um, so Dreamer of Joy, uh, both of the mirrors have a have a, a shared effect that during the end phase, you can banish this card and activate the opposite mirror from your hand or deck. And you can only use this effect once per turn, so you can't infinitely cycle through all of them. So each of the Dream Mirrors also has a unique effect. Uh, Dream Mirror of Joy has a unique effect where Dream Mirror monsters you control cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects or their monster attacks except your Dream Mirror monster with the highest level. So that's usually going to be the fusion monster when you have that out. And Dream Mirror of Terror um, reads that each time your opponent special summons a monster, inflict 300 points of damage to them. So it can be useful in time, things like that. But each of these effects is only applied if you control a light or a dark monster, respectively. Um, so it's kind of important um, that you have the right monsters on the board. But like I said, those aren't really what we're going for all the time. We're mainly just trying to have these on the board to get the more advantageous effects from our other support cards and trade out our monsters accordingly to use their correct effects as and when we need them. So that's the real kind of technical dynamism of the deck um, jumping between these mirrors. Uh, and you absolutely have to play three of each, which is what forces this whole deck to be so crammed full of cards to begin with. Um, then for the trap lineup, this is the one that's completely subject to change, but I do stand by the fact that you have to play three of the first card. Um, that first card is three copies of Dream Mirror Hypnagogia. Um, Hypnagogia allows you to choose a Dream Mirror of Joy and a Dream Mirror of Terror from your hand and or deck and place one in your field zone and then the other in your opponent's field zone. Um, so it's really good for setting up both of the mirrors, which you want to do all the darn time, but you can also use it to block your opponent's field spells. So say they activate a field spell, you can chain this in response, give them one of yours, uh, and then it of course destroys theirs. Um, and given that we're in a format where field spells are ridiculously powerful with cards like or Orchestrated Babel, to name but one, Mystic Mine, things like that, uh, you play an automatic Mystic Mine out in the deck. And you got to love that, having that in 2020 Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, then we play two copies of Dream Mirror Oneromancy. Um, so Oneromancy, I really just want to draw into, uh, or I'm going to be searching if I don't, uh, sorry, searching if I already have the fusion spell for the deck. Um, so when your opponent activates a spell or trap card while well, you control a Dream Mirror of Joy in a field spell zone, you can negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And when your opponent would special summon a monster, if you control the Dream Mirror of Terror, uh, you can negate the summon if you do destroy it. So it's a Black Horn of Heaven, or it's a magic slash trap jammer. Okay, and for the last trap we play, we play a Dream Mirror Fantasy. Um, this is card, a card that I more play because you have to, rather than particularly wanting to. Um, it's a card that's all right. If you control a Dream Mirror monster, you can target one of each of your banished Dream Mirror of Joy and Dream Mirror of Terror, shuffle them into the deck. And if you do, banish one card on the field. And if a Dream Mirror card or cards you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from the graveyard instead. It's pretty cool for the protection effect, and it's most 
almost mandatory for the fact that you are going to be using it to recycle your dream mirrors if you should get to the end of them. Um, the whole reason I'm playing this is because while I have a way to recycle my monsters, I don't have a way to recycle those all-important field spells, um, and this is searchable should I require off of the dream mirror sprite. So that's the reason why we're playing that, and that brings us to, I believe, a 41 card main deck. Uh, there's definitely cards you can cut, but I thought I'd include that extra Valkyria uh, just for the experimental purposes and let you know I'm trialing it. Then for the extra deck, past the first monster that we're going to go through, everything else is completely subject to flux. However, this is the extra I am testing. I'm aware that you should really be playing a lot of multiples in here to protect from the pot. However, these cards come up so infrequently that it's not too much of a bother and the pot is only really there if you didn't have the advantage to already get to these plays. So let's dig in with, of course, first, the boss monster of the deck, three copies of Oneros, the Dream Mirror Earl King. Now, Oneros is really, really cool. Um, you summon him using two Dream Mirror monsters with different attributes because, of course, it wouldn't be a Chaos deck without it. Um, while face up on the field, this card is also treated as dark, so it's a light and a dark, so he clarifies, he, so he becomes a light and a dark Dream Mirror monster for both of the mirrors. Uh, effects, which are really, really cool. The field spells. Um, if another monster you control is tributed, except during the damage step, you can target one card on the field and destroy it. Of course, that triggers as a quick effect because it is a trigger condition. Um, he's going to be triggering every time you tribute off one of your um, Dream Mirror monsters. Uh, of course, that is actually an effect that only works once per turn, unfortunately, but it is an interrupt that you can set off. It also works when you tribute things like your Almirage or your Linkaribo. Um, which will come up and are quite easy to make, considering the deck plays a lot of small and normal summons and level 1 monsters. Um, and also, if this card in your possession uh, is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon one Dream Mirror monster from your graveyard. So if he does die, he can oftentimes resurrect something like a Morpheus and trigger the Morpheus' effect, because whatever he resurrects is, of course, being special summoned by the effect of a Dream Mirror monster being himself. Um, so he's got a roll of really cool effects that complement the deck, and you want to rush him out onto the field as quickly as possible. Because given the fact that he's the biggest guy, you can protect him with things like uh, your fantasy, uh, and he offers protection to everything else with cards like uh, Dream Mirror of Joy. Uh, he's also protectable with cards like Daedalus, um, and gives him a lot more staying power. So this is the card you're going to rush out as quickly as you physically can. Then for the, like I said, the more inconsequential stuff, we play the one uh, Relinquished Anima because you can make this using your level ones and it's good into an opponent's board. One Almirage, and this again should be two Linkaribo, like the Altergeist profile, but I still don't have two Linkaribo. So the Linkaribo is a stand-in, but I think Linkaribo is still very, very important for the deck because of its tribute effect and because if you brick this is probably going to at least save you a little bit. Um, then for the Link 2s, um, there's a lot of power in some of these Link 2s. There's Cross Sheep, which you can, of course, get a huge amount of advantage off when you summon an Oneros underneath him, um, and then resurrect an extra monster uh, and start cycling those in your opponent's turn. Um, you have uh, a Verde Anaconda. Verde Anaconda, because of course can of course trigger the rituals sorry the f uh, fusion spell from the deck so uh, allows you to skip out the search for the fusion spell if you're going to end your turn with a dream mirror of terror on the field um so anaconda comes up in that regard so you can search for something else like say the counter trap uh barricade ball blocker another way to uh recycle your search card in the form of your dream mirror phantasms and it can also help you pick up any dream mirror of joys or terrors that were destroyed and didn't Manage themselves. Um, so pretty good in those regards. Uh, one Phoenix because it's generic removal and trust me you're going to need it for things like, I've forgotten the name of it now, Imperial Order because you very much need your spells in play. Uh, we then play one Link 3 and one Link 4 in the form of uh, a Unicorn and an Access Code Talker. You're very very rarely going to find yourself up here in these sort of Link tiers because the deck does, just doesn't generate that much advantage but it's there should you require it. Um, and then finally I'm playing two copies of uh, Titanic Galaxy Hope Harbinger. Um, you need this um, because of your, because you're very often going to make it with your Dark Creator and Amorpheus, and it's very, very good for protecting some of your smaller things like Icolos and like uh, Phantasos. Um, so this guy's just really, really important for those protection effects, as well as being a very good spell stopper, and there are much more powerful spells in the metagame right now, especially with cards like Chaos Space coming along that are going to be searching free boss monsters, and you're going to be seeing BLS quicker than you've ever seen it before. But that does bring me to about the end 
end of the profile. So I hope you have all enjoyed. Um, this was... This, this deck is a lot of fun, but it is a lot of stress to try and play um, on any kind of testing environments because we are, of course, in the pre-release stage um, of uh, Toon Chaos. I am having to test against a lot of the Numeron decks and a lot of the broken stuff, which is still doing the rounds in Japan at the moment. Um, so it's definitely uh, a troublesome deck to actually get some testing in on because this is a solid tier two, t tier point two point five or even a tier three, but it is a lot of fun, uh, and I've been really looking forward to bringing you guys the profile on it because I really love the way the deck looks and the way the deck plays. I just wish it was a little bit more powerful. But if you have enjoyed, please leave this a like down below. Um, I'd say. We'll do a combo video, but just leave me likes. Leave me likes if you enjoyed this more fun profile. Uh, subscribe if you're new here. I'd love to you to stick around for some more Yu-Gi-Oh goodness. Um, send this to your friends if you think they've been trying to work on a Dream Mirror concept. And let me know down below any changes you would make or any deck profiles you would like me to do in the future. I hope you have all enjoyed. I have been Jamie the Kid Zero Zero, and I will see you guys very very soon with some more Yu-Gi-Oh related chaos content. See you very soon. Take care. Bye bye. Shadow in the spotlight No stars inside